ahead and just do this. And then hit it with one of these. I really can't bring myself to like these things. And then just beat it. And it does spawn enemies on death, so you need to watch out for that. That'll always help. But nothing too bad. And it did give us our flash grenade back, so that's really good. Flash grenades, really, really good at taking out groups, so I just like to use them. Uh, the first time I played through this game, it, I never really used them and ended up with like four in my inventory by the end of the game, so... If you end up in a room with a lot of stuff, just go ahead and use them. I mean, I still have three on me, and I've used probably about that many. So if you find yourself in a room with a lot of stuff, uh, just use it. I mean, use it or lose it, essentially. There, we just take control of the crane to open up the library. Again, we've been here before. Go ahead and hit these guys with flare gun. Flare gun, really, really good weapon. I love the flare gun, in all honesty. It's pretty damn broken because it stuns them for such a long time. The only thing about it is, is that the projectile is slow as hell. That's about it. But, we've been here before. Uh, if anybody has seen the first one, we actually saw Freeman here, originally. And his office is actually blocked off, so we can't go in there. But this is where we learned about his brother's whole, uh, quote-unquote, aviation accident. And how he mysteriously vanished... It was all ceremony and everything else for basically telling a lie that Leonard died, but ended up being that Freeman was keeping him in the basement of the school and experimenting on kids to try and help his brother back to normal. But it ended up being that they uh, couldn't end up uh, fixing him because the kids in the original actually ended up solving their whole mystery and actually ended up just destroying both Leonard and his brother. Not so much his brother, that was Walden, the teacher, but they put an end to all of the stuff that Friedman was doing. So essentially, we uh, are just back in the original location, which is weird. Uh, this place you'd think was closed and taken down. I mean, it was kind of destroyed at the end of the first one, at least the gymnasium was. So it's a little strange that it's still standing, but it does start to make a little bit more sense as it goes. Yeah, a really annoying instinct. But we do have the building that we actually never visited in the first one, right here. So, we'll have to turn pretty nice. Together. We do have a location that we hadn't been to. we do have to spin our analog stick to turn wheels. Uh, it's a okay concept. I mean, I'm okay with it. It does make it a little bit more interactive, but at the same time, it doesn't really do a whole lot. There's our last small key, though, for this area. So now we have to find the box. Won't be that much of an issue, though. Considering I know where the box is, so... But we're just going to run back. And 
Corey just destroyed him before I ever even got a flare off, so that's kind of unfortunate. But at the same time, whatever. Tree man down. Works for me. Do have a bunch of the same book laying around. We'll go ahead and make another save. Again, it's just nice having a save. Uh, we won't really be back up in this room, so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. But just having saves is nice for the simple fact that if we die, we go back to the main menu. So you actually do have to worry about that. Go ahead and throw one of these, because I hate dealing with those things. Harpies are one of my least favorite enemy types, just gonna say. But we do have dynamite in this cabinet. Can't really do anything with the closet. It's kind of weird because I'm pretty sure this room was originally destroyed to begin with. So it's a little bit of a continuity thing that this is still standing. Uh, a bit strange, but whatever. I mean... There could have been walls repaired or other stuff. Hide. It's gonna blow. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure it's not a good idea to throw dynamite in an already falling apart building. Uh, you know, might just be me, but that seems like a really, really dumb idea. Go ahead and crate smash him. We still haven't found that freak from the and you can use crates and stuff against enemies. So it's a decent tactic. I never really use it though myself. Just because, well, I find picking up stuff like that really slow. And Corey gets a double dose of caffeine. So he's probably feeling pretty damn good. But we do need to find or open up the locker, or not the locker, the door at the end here. Because this room here, in particular, we can't do anything about until we have Shannon. Who I could have brought along, now that I think about it in hindsight, but at the same time, it's whatever. Doesn't really matter that much. Again, whenever you need an ally to progress, it's not really that far off the beaten path to go and grab them. Takes about 10, 15 seconds. So your ally that you need to grab is never really far away. So we've got Shannon. We're going to need her to give the spores on the wall the big suck. So she can go ahead and do that. And we did that, so now we can go ahead and open up the door. And if anybody remembers, this is actually where uh, we originally met Stan. So this is originally where Stan was located in the first one. It was like the principal's office or something. But then we get the mini SMG, which I'm not really sure why that would be there. But hey, I mean, whatever. And we got a jerry can full of gas, which we will be using shortly. Which, in case anybody is wondering why I didn't use the uh, excavator first here, it's because, well, we needed the jerry can. You couldn't start it without it. So. Now we can go ahead and lift it up, take it over, and dump it over the wall. So now we can go back out. Uh, we're actually going to need Cory again, so I'm going to need to switch Shannon off. And you specifically need Cory and Stan. 
So just make sure to switch back to Cory, whose hair apparently stands out in fog. That is really, really bizarre looking, but whatever. So yeah, we switch back off to Cory and Stan. Uh, the dynamic duo is 100% required for the next part. Like, no ifs, ands, or buts. It needs to be Cory and Stan. So you might as well switch to him to save yourself a little bit of backtracking. But then we can go ahead and not walk into the plant, walk around the plant, and hook up our weight that we got here. And then just bring it over to the wall and start hitting. Which honestly doesn't take much. It's just one or two hits. So then we go down. Just keep going down. We will need Cory. Because specifically, he is needed for this part. But here we have Jedediah's letter. April 18th, 1903. I'm stuck here at Leafmore. My body can no longer tolerate light after I injected myself with Lordophilia cells. It's changing. I can no longer move. Undoubtedly, I won't be able to write anymore soon. I failed. Instead of giving me eternity, Lordophilia is going to kill me. How ironic. I leave behind me my young son, Jedediah. The genes I transmitted to him during conception were already mutating. Even so, his mother and I wanted him to live. He is strong, but his physiological state is troubling. At times, he can be very aggressive. Aggressive with one G. Mortophilia has powers that exceed my predictions. My emotions are changing. Anger rises in me more and more frequently. First, there's something I have to settle with so, the yeah, if anybody hasn't really put it together yet... Uh, Leonard had a kid, and that kid is Jed. So, it's a bit interesting. Oh, yeah, we need to lift up old Stan here. I'm going to save. I could pick the door first, but I don't know if that deactivate the flower kind of like earlier, whenever we help Sven up. So, yeah. We're just going to save, uh, for saving sake. Don't want any issues going on there. Actually, hang on a second. We want to set up some weapons, too. Uh, yeah, Corey having the shotgun's fine. That's whatever. We can go ahead and give him the Uzi, too, I guess, so he's not trying to shock Jed. And then Stan can keep the flare gun. Uh, we'll go with the crossbow instead of the grenades. Actually, we'll switch off the thing there for that. Don't think there's anything else up here, so. Okay, now we just need to pick this lock. Which may or may not be easier said than done, honestly. So this one stops there. Okay, so this one's stopping me here. And nothing too insane. But we enter into a cutscene. The scariest of all of the things you can find behind a door. So yeah, uh, Leonard from the first one, he's not dead. Or not Leonard, but his brother. Honestly, it's kind of confusing, actually, now that I think about it, because they make it sound like Leonard is the one that did it, but at the same time, they're saying that it's Friedman, the principal, Herbert. So I... it's a little strange. You're all 
So yeah, we do enough damage to Jed, then he runs back to the tree. Same time, we kind of need Cory to start shooting it. So now we switch off to the person with the chainsaw and just start sawing into the limb. Meanwhile, Cory can do his own thing and defend us while we recharge. That worked well. <laughs> Make sure there's not anything in these boxes. I'm in top Go ahead and use one of those. Cory needs to start shooting the damn thing. You're dead, Friedman. Also, it's got like some weird Lovecraftian chanting going on in the background. Okay, Stan, do not just burn through all of that. Well, you did anyways. Oh well. Uh, didn't really want him to, but same time whatever now cory has been grabbed we can just go ahead and do this and that's the end of that fight unfortunately Stan kind of ripped through all of the ammo Dad is dead. He won't make any more flowers but you can still chop him up into firewood with that chainsaw of yours Get a nice fire going, get all warm and comfy while your daddy burns. Again, line delivery is absolutely hilarious. But yeah, now we have a chainsaw fight, so... We're gonna go ahead and challenge Jed here. And you can probably hear my tapping like crazy, but at the same time, I want him dead. So, Jed's dead, baby. Jed's dead. Two years of nightmares and trials, and then this. So, we have finished off the old uh, villain, as well as his son. It's kind of all a cycle. A bit strange, but. You know, happens. Help us arrive. It is rather interesting that it immediately starts killing off the flowers. It's time to go back. So they did all kind of have a connection back to Friedman. Who again, I'm pretty sure is supposed to be Leonard, but at the same time they don't really say, like, clearly. So it's kind of weird. Uh, if you're thinking that it's over, uh, not to spoil it, but yeah, this is a false ending. There's an epilogue. <laughs> they, uh, they try and hit you with the fake ending, but at the same time, it, it didn't really work the first time that they did it on me. Not like Signalis that I just played. Mainly because it left the open end of Amy. Uh, I didn't figure that it would be an actual ending. Also, it's only been like two hours of playing so it's kind of weird if you have it end after you know two hours and still have one of the characters apparently infected so it was you know i don't know if the whole false ending thing was the best idea but we will have more after the end here I'll probably just put a timestamp or whatever so people can skip to it, but just rambling to ramble at this point. But yeah, the, the false ending, uh, 
it's whatever. I mean, for 2000 and... I think this game came out in 2007 or 8? No, I think it was 2006. Uh, anyways, False Ending at that point was still kind of a newer thing, if you want to call it that. Uh, it definitely wasn't really as anticipated, or not a whole lot of people have done it. At least from my recollection of playing things. So I could see it actually hitting people like pretty blindsided, which would be interesting. I mean, but nowadays with all of the things that I've done in recent games, trying the false ending, uh, it was kind of unfortunate timing for myself just because Signalis had just done it and pulled the whole maneuver really well with like four and a half, five hours into an indie game, I kind of figured that would be the ending. So it hit me a lot better than this one did. So it's not bad per se, but it's just, I was too prepared for it, honestly. So it's not really the game's fault. It's more of mine, just because I was too prepared for a false ending. And it just left so many things up in the air that I figured it had to be a false ending. Either that or it would be just a so-so ending. Like, really bad kind of ending. <laughs> just for how much they would have left up in the air. Which is ironic, considering how this game actually ends. All things considered. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we still have more to play, but probably another 45 minutes to an hour's worth of play time so nothing nothing insane but still also buster cox as Corey is just funny like that that gets a giggle out of me every time but yeah this isn't the true ending uh, we'll get to it shortly and then we'll Keep playing from there. All honesty, this game is really, really fun for just shits and gigs. I mean, if you play with somebody, you'll probably have a lot of fun. Uh, this isn't the Steam version, like I said. If you want the Steam version, it doesn't have widescreen. And there are no mods to make it widescreen. So just take that as a warning and a grain of salt. Like right here, right now. I'll probably repeat it at the end. Oh yeah, and uh, if you notice on the ambulances, this is actually a cool little detail, but remember the frat house of Delta, Theta, uh, Gamma? The ambulances actually have that on them. So it's actually kind of a neat detail. I just noticed that, honestly. So yeah, Amy kind of ballooned while we were fighting Friedman and Jed uh, in pretty miraculous fashion, honestly. She was tiny before, and now she is a balloon. Like, nine months pregnant, plus some in about 15 minutes. It's kind of insane. Like, damn. And Corey gets to go with Amy, and we get to go with Shannon. Kind of weird they didn't just stash us all in one ambulance, and why they would stash Corey with Amy, but at the same time, it's like, whatever, they needed a reason to split us up, and it's as good of a reason as any. So, eh. I can't really fault it. It's, it's just working with what it's writing. I guess you could say it needs better writing, but... Whatever, I mean, you need to split up the group somehow, and it's better than everyone passed out but the driver and the passenger. 